Hello everybody, I'm Lisa Nerys. This is my digital space. I hope you enjoy. Now, this video is really just for me to play with my makeup because I have to film anyway. Um, there's not a whole lot of messaging that we're doing today. Today is just like an easy glam, playing with a new palette. Shout out to the good people at Hermosa La Flor. Cosmetics, is it Hermosa La Flor or is it Hermosa Flor? I'll put it somewhere here, the official name of the palette and the cosmetic brand that owns it. Um, yeah, you'll hear my thoughts on the palette in the video. Um, but for the time being, that's that on that. I hope you enjoy. I have a whole like three, four hour schedule worth of filming to get through. So yeah, we're just hoping for the best. Okay? Okay. All right, now you're gonna start with partitioning your hair. You're gonna do it mainly in fourths, but for the sake of this conversation, we're just gonna say halves. So you're gonna put one half in a little pun, in a little bun, then you're going to take the other half and half it again, right? Because you'll need to be dealing with all that at once. So you're gonna partition that off. Now, work some product through the hair that's remaining. I like to use some a shea butter whip, but you you know it's cold, so you gotta warm that thing up. And then you detangle once it's all worked through from tip to root. Take your time here. It's a little tedious. It's a workout for your arms, but you'll be fine. Take half of what you just did, put it away, right? You don't need all of that. This is where the fun starts now. You're gonna take some wool. I got mine from Beauty on Tap. Shout out to them for also the very amazing shipping and you're going to work that through almost as if you were like wrapping it up. So imagine, you know when you break your iPhone charger or your phone charger and you wrap tape around it so that it doesn't, you know, get any more bent out of shape than usual? Basically, that's what you're doing with this wool. Now, the process is tedious because sometimes it gets, you know, the wool gets wrapped around your arm or wrapped around your hand, etc., etc. Just take your time and be gentle, especially by the tip, right? So by the end of the hair, you've got that little tiny sliver of hair left. If you would like, it is useful, add a little bit of oil to that just so that your hair maintains its moisture as you're doing this exercise, right? So for some of my braids, I like to go from the root to the tip with the wool and then from the tip to the root again. Now here you're gonna see the front part where I'm hoping you'll be able to see what I'm doing a little bit better. Again, root to tip, I mean tip to root for the detangling, right? You wanna make sure that your hair is as detangled as possible because what's the use of stretching it if it's still got knots in it, right? You don't want that. And basically, again, you want small-ish partitions. So on my head, I had about eight in total, right? You want a wide tooth comb. I already had stretched hair when I was doing this because I had done something earlier in the week that kind of kept my hair stretched out. But I just want to do this again so that it maintains its length, it retains its length. So if you haven't stretched your hair previously and this is the first time that you're doing it, make sure that your hair is as detangled, as stretched as possible. I like to do a two strand twist before I thread, like maybe the day or two before, just so that I'm not working with too much uh, difficulty. Right, so you're gonna try and get that wool started all the way at your roots. There's no need for this to be very tight. Someone asked me, well, what about your hairline? How will this impact your hairline? This is a protective style. If at any point your hairline is suffering, you are not protecting your hair, you are not stretching it anymore, you are damaging it. So please be mindful of that. Okay, this is this part of the video. Basically, I'm gonna keep weaving the rest of my head, but I'm gonna do the other half completely off camera until we get to the makeup part, okay? Okay.
And we're on to the makeup. You're going to start with some primer. I use one by Maybelline, the Pore Eraser Primer. And you just put that all over. It's very, very moisturizing, by the way. Then I color correct, but I don't have a color corrector, so I'm taking this red LA Girl lipstick. I know somebody might judge me for it, but alas, I don't think I really like this lipstick. I think if you've seen my IGTV, you know I don't like this lipstick. So it works well if I'm trying to color correct and just get some use out of it after having paid for it. You're going to blend that all the way in, and then I take another concealer just because I don't want my usual concealer or foundation to fight with this red, and I just blend that in just so that it's not so in your face, I guess. In my mind, it makes sense. Perhaps I'm not articulating myself as perfectly as I mean to, but you get the gist of things. Now, you're going to continue on. I really only put that concealer under my eyes, and then I let the, the foundation do the rest around the mouth. So I am using a Revlon Color Stay Foundation. It claims to be full coverage, but if you've watched any of my IGTV videos where I do my makeup on camera, I had some things to say. So you're going to just kind of work that all over your face. I use a brush. I'm currently in the market for a new brush because I just feel like this one is not doing everything that I need it to do. Okay, then you're going to go and you're going to take a little bit. You're going to take a blender and just work that around your face just so that there's no streaky lines or just, you know, lines of demarcation in general. Now you're going to move on and add some concealer. I use the Fenty Beauty Match Stick in shade Caramel. You put that under your eyes and on the bridge of your nose. Then I follow up with an LA Girl Yellow Corrector. Now I used to use the light yellow one, but that was just too light and it washed me out. So I add that on top just for a little bit of moisture. And what else happens? We have some tea. It's very cold, guys. Who else is feeling very cold? This is actually just quite ridiculous. Then you move on, you add your contour. Now, baby girl, I gained some weight, and you can see it in my face, so I contour very high and I contour very heavy. You put some around your cheeks, on your forehead, by your nose, under your chin, and you go in there with a brush, that's how I do it at least, you go in with a brush and you blend that out. Leave your concealer under your eyes to sit as long as possible, really. Like, I let that thing sit forever if I could. <laughs> but you just want to keep blending out that contour, especially by the chin, you know, chin, bottom of the face area. If you, you know, if that's a problem area for you, using a smaller blender, you're going to blend out your nose contour. You will come back with powder for the nose contour just because it almost looks like I've completely blended it out, but that's not how I like my nose contour. Then I'm going to take some brown uh, powder. Unfortunately, I don't have dedicated contour powder. I'm thinking about a purchase. I'm not going to say from which brand. But for now, I've been using an Essence Brown powder, like eyeshadow powder. And you just work that around. Try to make sure that you use a brush that isn't too tight. So one of my problems in the past is that I've used a very tight brush when I was doing my face contours. And it can just look very harsh, especially on camera, if anything. So then you move on. As you see, your, your concealer is still sitting there. You're going to move on to your eyebrows. I have been using a pencil by Makeup Revolution. I love it. I am in love with it. Okay? Essence has held me down for many, many years, but I feel like, you know, Makeup Revolution deserves its chance to make all of my pots and all of my dreams come true. So I like to start on the bottom with one very like clear line and around halfway through the top, that's where I add the line in and I just kind of fill in very lightly. I'm not an eyebrow buffin. Listen, I know there are many, many eyebrow styles. This is a style that I like, okay? I like to see my brows. I don't do feathered brows. I don't do barely there wispies. I want my brow to show up to the room when I walk in. Okay? Okay.
Now we're going to cut the cheek, as our faves from Drag Race would say. Now we're finally blending out this eye uh, concealer, this under eye concealer. So I like to bring it all the way onto the lid. I know that we're supposed to have some eyeshadow base, but I'm not there yet in my makeup journey, okay? And you want to keep that under eye concealer as much under the eye as possible because you did a really good job of like bringing that contour really high. It would be a shame to kind of have my under eye concealer be competing with it on the side. That would be silly. Now you're going to add some under eye powder. Now, it is very important that you set that under eye. Not just in general, but specifically because the palette that I'm going to be using requires that you catch some things with powder underneath, but we'll get to that in a bit. Now you're going to want to intensify that nose contour. Again, I'm dipping into that same brown eyeshadow technically uh, that I've been using to contour my face uh, by Essence. And then just kind of put that around the side. You're going to add a little bit more powder to the forehead on the bridge of the nose. Then you want to dust off. Now personally, I use a translucent powder and it's not like one of those where it's light or, you know, I don't know, banana or whatever. So because of that, it can wash out the face. That is why, for example, you see me taking some face colored powder underneath my contour by my chin and having taken it to my forehead a little bit just to create a blend between the contour and the highlight. Now this is where you see me adding some extra and I mean extra powder under the eye, right? We're going to apply some eyeshadow to our eyes. I am using the Hermosa Flor Cosmetics White Lily Eyeshadow Palette. I think... First of all, just shout out to them for the amazing marketing. I felt like I was a part of something when I purchased this powder. It did with this this palette. It did take a long time to get here, but that has everything to do with coronavirus, and I really can't fault them for that. Um, so basically, I'm going in with this orange color. You all know me. I'm not very much into specifics. You don't have to get this particular palette, but you can take any orange that you have, dust that into your crease area, and then you're going to take a light brown and then follow up with a darker brown and put that on the outer lid, right? You do that on both sides. You just kind of pack it up. Now, what I will say about this palette in particular is that there is kickback and there is fallout. Now, fallout, that's what the powder's for underneath your eyes, right? It's to catch all of that so that it doesn't stay or it doesn't stick or it doesn't... Um, the pigment doesn't take necessarily. The kickback on the other hand is just gonna make your palette dirty. You know, so just be prepared to dust it off before you put it away. Then you're gonna take a champagne-y type of color. Um, interestingly enough, the, the name of this color is Potty because the founder of the brand was, you know, roasted a little bit online for how she pronounced Welcome to the Party. And instead of kind of like letting that get to her, she made a moment of it and dropped a palette and named a whole color after it. And I thought that was really cool. So you see me blowing off that little, you know, kickback in the pan. Then you're going to dust off all of that extra powder, right? You're going to dust it off. You don't need it. Take it off before you start to look like a ghost. Now you're going to line your eyes. Just before filming this video, I messed up my lashes. So this is going to be a lashless video. So because of that, you don't want this much eye makeup without at least some kind of line of demarcation of like where your eye is going to be, if that makes sense. So not a super thick line because then, you know, you'd need a lash, but like a line that says this is where my eyes are going this is where my iris is going to start 
basically, right? You're gonna coat on some mascara. I use a mascara by Essence. I'm not too particular on the name. Another really great brand for mascara is Maybelline. They've held me down forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. But this Essence one, it bangs too. Then you're going to bronze, okay? So I use the Fenty Beauty powder bronzers. I put that on my forehead, I put it on my cheeks, just to bring some color and like shape back into, and warmth really, back into my face. Now we're going to highlight a little bit on the bridge, a little bit on the tip of the nose. I love a button nose, guys. Who else likes a button nose? Then you put some over the lip, on the chin, on the cheeks. Now you're going to tight line, okay? So that's putting some kind of liner in that, like, fleshy area underneath your eye. I don't know how to explain that. In in your waterline, there you go. Put some eyeliner in your waterline just so that your eyes are a little bit more defined. Now we're gonna line our lips. I am a fan of overdrawn lips, okay? You're gonna put a light color inside. I'm adding like a pinky, I don't wanna call it nude because it's, it's quite pinky, but I guess you could call it a pinky nude. And then I'm literally tapping on some like hectically pink gloss just so that I can have that, you know? And that's that. We're gonna set with some spray and wait to dry. Thank you guys so much for watching through to the end. I hope you saw some products that you're kind of interested in or maybe didn't know how to try or how to use them or how they can be used at all. But um, that's that on that. I am Missionaries once again. This is my digital space. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you've subscribed. Have you subscribed? You should do that before you leave. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Until next time, until the next upload, or until the next post, wherever you find me on social media. Bye.